Hello, English 11 students, and welcome to the week two, day two video. Uh, this, this video is designed for those of you who missed our live Zoom class. Uh, and to participate in the video, um, just as before, there will be some Nearpod uh, messages that will pop up occasionally in the video, and you will need to have Canvas open another tab or window so you can access the materials you'll need for today. Uh, just as a reminder, right, everything that you do when you're typing in your answers and when we're on live Zoom calls is recorded, so please make sure you keep everything school appropriate. Our agenda for today. I wanted to review the syllabus quiz, which you've already turned in by now. Uh, review the unit-themed warm-up with guided notes. I'll show you how that works. And you'll have an exit card to kind of fill out at the end of this video. And then just some action items and reminders for you. So looking at the syllabus quiz, right? Just kind of going through these very quickly. Uh, what is the theme for marking period one in English 11, right? The correct answer was race, culture, and identity. Uh, Mr. Krause is the only teacher for this class, right? That answer was false, right? Dr. Smith and Ms. Deal are our co-teachers. Uh, the major common task for marking period one is a narrative inspired by an image. And then uh, the average number of assignments students will be graded on each week, right? There was a multiple choice question. The answer was two, okay? You can pretty much rely on there always being two assignments each week. Uh, the next question was starting week four, students will work on building skills for reading what? And then the answer was visual text or images. Uh, office hours or virtual check-ins are mandatory is false. Right, that's only done on a case-by-case -case basis. And then uh, Mr. Krause will send out a new Zoom code each week for students to attend class and office hours. That was also false, right? We just keep using the same Zoom code for class and the same Zoom code for office hours every single time all semester long. And then the last question asked you to select one of these focus questions and kind of write a response, okay? There was no wrong or right answer for this one. You were just asked to write down about your thoughts, your feelings, and or your experiences here. Okay, so for the next portion of our course, what we are doing is we're working with a, we're kind of like ramping up to get started on the actual work for our unit, okay? That uh, race, culture, and identity. In order to do that, please open the unit theme warm-up guided notes under day two on Canvas. It's a Google Doc that looks like this. As we go through today's presentation, you will be filling in the blanks, these red brackets, on your guided notes. You can either delete the brackets and put in the word or words that, you're, uh, that need to go in there, or you can just type the words between the brackets. It's up to you. Um, if the video goes too fast for you. You know, you could always pause the video or you can always kind of rewind the video and revisit things to see what it is that you missed. Okay. So the first thing I'd like you to do, and if you take a look, sorry, I'll go back a second. There's a spot for this at the top of your note sheet, right? These three blank spaces is please list three words that describe you. And avoid using feeling words like, you know, uh, I am tired or I am confused. Um, what I'm really more looking for is, and this may help if you use this scenario, right? Pretend that an alien has just landed on earth and has just walked up to you, right? It's friendly, has walked up to you and says, what are you? And you have to give three answers, right? What would that those three answers be? Go ahead and fill in those boxes now. Okay, so we'll come back to that a little bit later. Um, one of these things on the screen, right, race, culture, identity, is called a, it's, it's a social construct, which is an idea that has been created and accepted by the people in a society, but it's not actually real or it's not actually true. So on your note sheet, you're going to place a red X next to the one that you believe is not real. Okay, well, the answer is race. Culture is real, identity is real, but race is actually not real. It's a social construct. So let's talk a little bit about that first. So race is a social construct. Again, that thing that a bunch of people in society agree on, but it's not actually real. And it was designed by Europeans to justify slavery. 
Race comes from a human desire to explain the unknown. So for example, you know, why is someone else's skin lighter or darker than my own? Or why is someone's hair, uh, the texture of someone's hair different than mine? We sort of naturally try to find something to explain why that happens. And unfortunately, the answer that people came up with, the Europeans came up with, was race, right? This thing that is not real. Inevitably, it leads to racism, right? The belief that race determines what you can or cannot do, and that racial differences produce an inherent superiority of a particular race, or the idea that because this race cannot do X, Y, or Z, you know, they are not as good as another race, etc. Again, all of this is completely made up. The problem is lots of people bought into this system because it allowed them to gain power in some way. And we'll talk more about that as the unit goes on. Culture are the customary beliefs, social forms, and material traits of a racial, religious, or social group. Right. So again, it's it's agreed upon by a bunch of people, but it is real. These are like the established practices that a whole bunch of people have gotten together and say, these belong to us. This is part of our culture. And the best way to think about culture is to kind of think of it like a tree. And I'm sure you've probably seen this last year, but the leaves of the tree represent the observable concrete elements of culture, right? Those things that you could definitely see. So for example, um, certain clothing, right? Like a, a hijab or a yarmulke, uh, certain songs or dances or the food or the cooking uh, and music that people practice, right? Those are the leaves, right? The easy to see elements that often grow and change as you grow and change. The trunk of the tree are the unspoken rules around everyday social interactions and norms. This is where, you know, and unspoken rules are, what it means is, you know, to not, you know, your parents don't ever say these things to you exactly, but you pick it up, right, by watching your parents or by watching other people who are part of your culture. And so some examples might be, you know, whether establishing eye contact is a good thing or a bad thing, um, how you properly greet an older person like your grandparents, for example. Um, ideas about, you know, what is appropriate language to use when you're in a certain space, like whether you're in home or church or mosque, etc. Um, and kind of just maybe just in general, the way that you show your affection towards other people, right? Some people, their cultural norm is, you know, to give great big bear hugs and other people don't do that. Other people are much more comfortable culturally, right, with other signs of affection. Then the last part of the tree, right, for culture are the roots, right? And this is the level that's made up of the implicit knowledge uh, and unconscious assumptions. What that means, right, implicit knowledge and unconscious assumptions is you as the person who's doing the cultural practices may not even know where you got the idea from. You just sort of naturally do it because you've been around other people within the culture for so long. So for example, um, you might be asking, you know, you may have questions like, you know, does your, um, th this one may sound silly, but what is the role of the family pet? In some cultures, you know, the family pet is almost like another family member. In other cultures, you know, pets are treated very differently. You know, there's very strict rules about whether they are or are not allowed in the house, you know, how you're supposed to interact with them. Um, you might also be asking yourself, these are like the roots questions, you know, that people don't normally ask themselves, but um, you'd be surprised that even if somebody did ask you, you have an answer and you wouldn't have realized like, where did I learn that? Um, things like, is it important for your family to get along and help each other? Or is it more important to be self-reliant, right? To kind of like let everybody take care of themselves, right? And you probably have an answer for that question, but when you start to think about where did you learn that answer, like how did you figure out that that's what your family's culture is, you'd probably recognize, hey, nobody ever said that to me. I just sort of naturally knew 
that that was part of my culture. So that covers the three layers of culture. Identity, the, the third term, right, is a personally constructed sense of self, right? It's not limited to culture or race. And just a major difference between race, culture, and identity, race and culture are things that everybody else gets to sort of determine about you in some ways, right? They will say, oh, that person over there is that race because I see them this way, or that person must have this culture because they're looking at the leaves of the tree, right? You know, because they're wearing a certain style of clothing or because they're listening to a certain uh, style of music. Identity is something that you control 100%, okay? And so while that is true, you are you determine your own identity, cultural and so, uh, societal norms can impact how someone identifies, right? So if society is telling you that, you know, the way you want to identify yourself is acceptable, then you're probably going to feel good about your identity. But if society or your culture is telling you that, you know, something is wrong with that identity or thinking of yourself that way, then you're not going to have that sort of positive outlook on your identity. Um, some examples, right, of ways that you can identify, and th this is not an exhaustive list, but you can identify um, through your sexuality, right, in the lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, um, questioning or asexual community. You can identify by your political leanings. You know, I identify as a Democrat or a Republican or independent. You can identify by your socioeconomic status, right? As someone who's lower class, middle class, or upper class. Uh, you could identify as a gamer. You could identify as an artist, as a, um, as an athlete. There's, you know, the list goes on and on and on. The most important thing for you to remember about identity is you are the one who determines that. Okay, so the interesting thing is if we go back and we look at that exercise from before, right? I asked you if an alien had landed and said, what are you, what would your three answers be? So it'd be interesting to find out and to look how many of us actually described ourselves by race, right? That thing that doesn't exist. And the question here is if race isn't real, then why do we still talk about it as if it is real? And this is kind of a tough question, but I want you to give it a shot, right? And in a minute, a bubble will pop up on your screen, and I'd like you to go ahead and type in an answer. So if race isn't real, then why do we still talk about it as if it is real? Okay. So the final thought for today in the, the unit theme preview, right, is race may not be real, but the belief that race is real has impacted everyone's lives in one way or another. Starting next week, we will be reading, listening to, and viewing texts uh, written by a variety of authors about their struggles and observations about race, culture, and identity, and how those three things usually don't work you know, independently. They usually kind of come together to impact the way somebody thinks of themselves and the way that they view their world. So for your exit card, and this will be something you type right here on the screen in this video, I'd like you to choose one of these two questions below to respond to. The first question is, what is one question you have about the material that we covered today? Or the other option is, what is one thing that we discussed today that confused or excited you and why? So take a minute to answer those one of those questions now. All right, thank you. Okay, so the very last thing, right, our action items. At this point, you should have turned in your summer reading homework. If you haven't already done so, please write me an email um, and I'll guide you through those steps. You should have already completed the syllabus quiz, even if, you know, I know I just went over it in this video, but if you didn't finish the syllabus quiz, please go through the process of doing that so that you understand how quizzes will work in Canvas. And then make sure that you have completed today's exit card, which you just did in, uh, that bubble uh, a minute before. Thank you very much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in class soon.